This is The Party with Serene and Pearl. Get it right, P-O-D-D-Y. So we are so excited today because we have Dr. Amy Horneman with us. And I have to say, Serene, I am a big nerdy fan of yours, Dr. Amy. So welcome to the show. Um, I've been listening to your podcast for a while because you are known as the thyroid fixer. And I've actually been over to Serene's house and I've been like, you've got to listen to this. This woman is doing amazing things. And so now I'm an official binge listener. Yes, I've been listening in the shower, on the toilet. I I get it. Breakfast. (laughs) That's where I listen to you guys too. So it's love right back, right? (laughs) Yeah, so big welcome. So as I said, I mean, you are the thyroid fixer. and, And I was just stumbling, you know, online one day and I saw the thyroid fixer and I thought what on earth because you know we are hormone nerds and um the importance of an optimized thyroid is just like perked me up I'm like what does this woman have to say and what you are having to say is changing lives you are having such an impact I mean I guess you don't know who's listening right but I have been listening and um and I and I hear the testimonies that you bring on your podcast and just the woman who were told that they were normal or fine are finally having someone to hear them that they weren't and that there's something to do. So welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you, lady. And and that's part of our job, right? Is to get the message out to women everywhere that they don't they don't have to accept the normal diagnosis. So I, I kind of have a battle cry that I'm that I'm I, that I'm putting out to the world for all women, and it's it's no more of the same, like no more mm. of the same treatment, no more of the same answers, no more of the same dismissal from conventional medicine. And of course, we'll get more into that. But I I I feel very strongly that we all are empowering women to be more knowledgeable, just like you said. I mean, you never know who's listening. I had a woman at the bank say, "Oh my God, you're Doctor Amy. I listen to your podcast." And so you never know who's who's listening and who you're touching. No, it's so true. And I would love to know, I've heard a little bit of your story and bits and pieces on um, your podcast. And you're doing this because you went through this very thing, right? Can you tell, um, tell us a bit about your own thyroid story? My story started, and many of you might even resonate with this. I was putting on weight rapidly. The kicker is that I was getting ready for a bodybuilding show, a fitness show figure. And this is where, for anyone who doesn't know, you're eating chicken, broccoli, asparagus. You're going to the gym once, sometimes twice a day. You're on a very, very strict regimen. And of course, you have a coach that you have to check in with. And I had done plenty of these. I had done multiple shows. I had gotten ready for photo shoots. I mean, you you know, you diet down, you get nice and lean. How many years ago on- was this? Like how many years? Oh. I would date myself, but uh, about 20, okay. 25 to 30 years ago. Oh, wow. Really. Okay. It was, I was in my 20s at the time and was always really big into fitness, but I wanted that challenge. I loved the challenge of getting my body into the best shape possible mm-hmm. until it basically rebelled against me. Mm-hmm. And the scale kept going up. And every time I had to do a check-in with my coach, I'd step on the scale and the scale went up. And, you know, that really messes with your mind. I became depressed. I started to question myself. I I got more into the deprivation mode of maybe if I eat even less and exercise even more, that will help, which we all know that just pushes you further down the hole and destroys your metabolism. So it was a really dark time because you're doing everything. (laughs) You're doing everything. And of course I had to quit. I had to, I had to quit the show, quit the prep, you know, tell my coach, I'm sorry, I can't do this one. And I felt like a failure. I felt judged. You know, I felt like everyone that knew me as that competitor fitness model was now talking behind my back. Like, oh, she's eating too many donuts. You know, she's, she must be going off her diet. And I I just felt basically like a a failure, Mm. like a failure. And I, so I went to different doctors because that's what we do. When something is wrong with us, we first, you know, you go to your PCP, you go to your family doctor and you say, hey, you know, uh, this crazy thing's happening in my body. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Can we figure it out? And that doctor, number one, told me that I was normal. 
and everything mm-hmm. was fine. The old normal. Normal. Air quotes yes. for everyone. <laughs> Air quotes. And then I kept going, though. I didn't stop, thankfully. And the crazy thing is I went to six different doctors who all told me I was normal. Everything's fine. Eat less, exercise more. It's all in your head, which just perpetuates the medical gaslighting and makes you think that you're even more crazy than you already believe that you are. Can I ask you a question? When you went to those six doctors, were they just testing like basic TSH, T4? Were they just doing the basic thyroid tests? I would love to know, but that would be my guess. Yeah. You know, that would be Oh, my, they just if, told if you I you're normal. Bet, right. Yeah. I, yeah. I would, I would plop down a million dollars on that bet all day long. That that's all they, if I could go back and see the test that they did, oh, I would love it. But I'm sure, I'm sure I, I just received TSH, maybe free T4, mm. and they called it a day. Mm. And that was it. The seventh doctor is the one who touched my throat and said, swallow. So she did something that no other yeah. doctor had done. And she said, you have hypothyroidism, you have Hashimoto's, you have a nodule, we're going to, we're going to biopsy it, we're going to ultrasound it, but here's a pill. Mm. So I left, I mean, I was happy, I was pumped, I had a name for what was going Mm. on with me, and I had a pill. T4, Synthroid. You got it, exactly. So I gave it five months. And as I say all the time, T4 only doesn't work. T4, only 2% of the population with hypothyroidism do well on T4 only. I was not one of that 2%. So I was part of the 98% that need T4 and T3 together or T3 by itself. In my binge watch, binge listening of your podcast, I heard you say, and out of those 2%, I'd like to see those people and see if they really are doing well. It's true. It's true because I've had conversations with women, you know, on planes or whatever. You start talking to women coming up to you and and they say, well, you know what? I want T4 only and I'm fine. And I'm looking at them and they're you know a little bit overweight. Their mm. hair is really super thin. They have dry skin. They look older than they are. And I'm like, is it just that that's your new norm and you're used to it and you don't even know what optimized feels like or what could be? So I would argue that yeah, as well. For sure. 100%. Now, in those five months, you were taking your T4 pill, your whatever Synthroid. Did you feel mm-hmm. any better, the same or worse? I didn't feel worse, okay. but I no change. Okay. Wow. I mean, zero. Like I would have been pumped for, you know, two pounds maybe, yeah. right? Just, just, you know, let me see a, a little bit of a, a of a movement downward on the scale that would have kept me going but nothing were you fatigued nothing. were you feeling like the the signs of hypothyroidism or or just suboptimal do you think and i'm kind of rushing forward in this do you feel like the thyroid crashing not necessarily crashing but getting hypothyroid and, and hashimoto's in the 20s do you think that was from excessive dieting and just the cortisol rush that was going through your body with that lifestyle? Or was it just something, yeah, else genetic? What do you think? I do. Well, no, I, I think the the uh, the first thing mm-hmm. that, that I crashed myself. But here's the thing with Hashimoto's, it's any stressor. <sighs> so when that switch turns to the on position with Hashimoto's or any autoimmune condition, it's usually a hormonal shift or a stressor. That's why we see so often women who get pregnant, which, okay, pregnancy is a normal built-in mechanism that us women have, but it's a stressor on the body. We don't think about it because it's like, oh, well, you know, you just have a baby. It's a huge stressor. I mean, you're putting on rapid extra weight. Your hormones are shifting like they never have in your life. And so that's just enough to turn that switch on. So yes, the stress of excessive dieting, excessive exercise, nutrient depletion, 100% flip that switch to the on position. So you're there five months. I mean, you've been, you think you've been treated. What do you do? You're the same. So I start looking on the internet, which I always joke. It was like one of those big yeah. gateway computers, like the big, <laughs> the big ones. With the, the big back. Days yeah. and like dial up internet oh, where you had to turn it on. That, like, away. 10 years ago at my house. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, there was information out there even back then. And I kept reading like this, this whole T3 thing. What's this T3 hormone? And T3 and T4 do so well together. And 
it's amazing that I even found that information all the way back then, but I took that to my doctor and I said, Hey, there's this, uh, active thyroid hormone T3. You're giving me the inactive thyroid hormone T4. Could we add like some T3 in, you know, kind of skip that middleman and give the cells what they want. She goes, no, I don't do Mm -hmm. that. I said, well, I'm going to find somebody who does because this ain't working. Wow. And so you did. So that led me to functional medicine. I mean, that's it. You know, you kept hearing, you know, when the universe gives you, you know, God, the universe, whatever you Mm -hmm. believe in, gives you signs and signals multiple times. And you kind of have to, you know, your ears perk up after the third time. You go, okay, I get it. I need to go see this person. But you. So that's what I did. I kept hearing the name of the same functional. And back then it wasn't even, we didn't even use the term functional. I think we used integrative, alternative, whatever that was that, that, you know, this person was great. You were meant to be I I mean, so many people, they hear information and they use it for themselves and that's fantastic. But you've taken that information. You've been leading this cause for proper Thyroid, thyroid fixing. Well, but, but what happened yeah. when you, you saw this doctor, they gave you T3. What changed inside you? It- Everything. Well, first of all, he sat there with me for an hour and a half. Mm. And that was an experience in and of itself because most doctor visits are seven mm. minutes. So for this man to take time with me and sit there and look at my labs and first of all, test everything. So he sent me off for, for this boatload of lab work. You know, the phlebotomist is like, Oh my God, we're on like eight miles, but it, it was everything that we needed to get the full picture of my health, which is why now I say, if your doctor says no to labs, it's time to get a new doctor because if they don't want to sit there and look at everything that's going on inside of you, how are they going to help you? Mm-hmm. They can't, you have to test and not just guess. So he did all the testing, looked at my supplements, looked at my lifestyle, looked at my eating. I mean, the whole thing. And yes, we, I started on T4 and T3. So he he actually changed me over to Mm -hmm. armor thyroid, which is natural desiccated thyroid. And that contains T4 and T3. That was enough at that time to shift my body. Totally shifted. The weight started coming off. I felt better. I mean, it was a short amount of time, really like six months to a year for everything to to get optimized and to get me into that much better place in did life. Did you start on about 30 micrograms of the armor? What was that for starting? I recall, I mean, gosh, it's so long ago because things have changed since then, but I recall 90, okay. 90 to yeah, 120. So he realized you had a big need even then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. You know, split yeah. dosing, which we all know now T3 is very Mm -hmm. fast acting. It's in and out of your system. So when you're taking something with T3 in it, or you're taking T3 alone by itself with T4, you want to split dose it twice Mm -hmm. a day. That keeps it in your system longer. So he even told me back then, you know, here, you want to take 45 in the morning or 60 in the morning, 60 in the Mm -hmm. afternoon, whatever my dose was. And, and that was working. And that was that experience is what shifted my career path. And it was at that point, and I was in a major city with a major medical system, we'll say, you know, like one of those medical systems that basically run Mm -hmm. the entire state um, and multiple states. So, you know, you naturally think to yourself, there's got to be a good doctor in this system. And I realized after my experience of six misdiagnoses and then the seventh mistreatment, um, I needed to do something for women. Because you're getting you're getting misinformation no matter where you are, whether you're in a small town with a local doc mm-hmm. or whether you are in a big city with a major medical system. They don't know the thyroid. No, they don't. And, and you, it's a travesty. Don't. I mean, we talk to women all the time and they send us their labs. They're like, you know, we're not doctors, but they're like, what do you think? And I think... And I think to myself, why aren't you being treated? I mean, how many people in your practice, what's the average percentage that come to you that have been told, that are coming from somewhere else that are already treated and told they're fine, but they're not? I mean, 99%. That's what we're seeing. Yeah. 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 There's, I I almost want to go a hundred. I don't know about you, but (laughs) you know, you always have that 1% that they, they come in 
where their doctor has tried. Yeah. Like they're on T4 okay. and T3 mm -hmm. and and their their practitioner is just like, oh, I just I don't mm -hmm. know what to do anymore. I'm not sure where to take you. So they, they've tried like the attempt, the efforts there, but they just yeah. need to take into that next level. The 99 percent are the typical yeah. misdiagnosed or normal. Everything's fine. It's all in your head. Eat less yeah. exercise more. So. I would love, because I love the way you describe what hormones do for us and why our bodies need them. And so let's talk about T3, because most people, when they're treated for thyroid, I are, like you said, just given T4. Most people are. There are some that are given natural desiccated thyroid these days, more if you see a functional uh, practitioner. But if you go to a regular doctor, usually it'd be T4. Why do we need right. T3? And then why do they give T4 if we need T3? So... T4, let's start with T4 is inactive. T3 is active. So we have to start with that knowledge base and know that every cell in your body has a receptor site on it for T3. So to your question, why even give T4? It's like a savings account. You know, you, you ultimately want some in your savings if you can. And then the T3 is in the checking. I mean, the ready to be used at a moment's notice. Some people don't do well with a savings account. I'm one of them. So if you give me T4, I will automatically convert it to reverse T3. I will go hypo. I'll gain weight. I'll become depressed. I am one of those non-converters. Do you feel like um, small do you feel like that's because your thyroid was uh, almost uh, very harmed through your Hashimoto's? Do you, do you think that's why? Or you're just a genetically like that? Okay. Genetics. It really has. I mean, I've seen patients that they're so far along in their Hashimoto state, their thyroid's itty bitty. They have antibodies yeah. in the thousands, but they can still tolerate. They're still converting wow. because the conversion takes place. Yes. In the thyroid gland itself, but also in the gut, the liver, the peripheral tissue. So you still have a chance of, of conversion elsewhere. I've never been tested. Actually, I just, I just did a new genetic test that I believe has the D101 mm. okay. SNP in it. I, but prior, and I don't know the results okay. yet, so I'll let you know. But prior to that, I've never been tested for that D101 or D102 mm. genetic SNP, which makes you, and again, with all genes, we have to say you, you are susceptible to this. It's not like a fate or or a guarantee, but I have the the potential to not convert because I have that D101, D102 SNP. So we'll see. We'll see. But that's my gut feeling as to what it is. Because I've experimented on myself. I've tried adding in the T4, just thinking like, wait, am I crazy? Am I really T3 only? Or can I tolerate a little bit of T4 and put it in my savings account? No, it right. doesn't work. But do you find that most people then can have some T4? They can have a little bit yes. and then you optimize them with T3 as well. Yeah. So T3 yes. again. Yeah, T3. If I can. I mean, you said every cell in our body uh, is a receptor for it. I mean, what does it do for us? That's what it's like a lock and key. So T3 comes in, connects to that cell, and then turns on that cell. So whether it's your metabolism, your ability to burn fat, the ability to go to the bathroom mm. every day, your brain, mm. so focus. Uh, mental clarity, motivation, memory, cognition, hair right. growth, nail growth, everything, every cell, every single cell, your heartbeat, your temperature regulation. I mean, it's a, it's amazing when you think about it. The entire body is reliant upon the thyroid gland being the master gland. Why wouldn't we spend more time on that gland in medical school? Why wouldn't we drill it home and, and go over every treatment possible and every test you should be doing on people when it literally runs the entire body. Insulin regulation, yeah. glucose regulation, cholesterol regulation, heart rate. I mean, people are diagnosed with AFib and tachycardia and it's yeah. thyroid. Wow. I and love they're struggling this. and they're desperate for help. But the doctors say, no, everything looks normal because they're going on outdated information. But do you see um, mm -hmm. that... As we, as women age and our hormones start to decline and get wacky, 
Is that when the thyroid starts to manifest as well? Because in my situation, you know, I mean, I think I, I had a good metabolism, metabolism really my whole life. I was, I was pretty great. And then um, in my late 40s, it slowed down some. And then I started to experience just cold, you know, and I, I always checked my thyroid and it was kind of normal. But I was, I would react to the weather all the time and I would just sit there shivering and everyone else was fine. And then finally, when I optimized my thyroid and I don't have hypothyroidism, I just had an unoptimized thyroid, which I think was because of my other hormones declining. I can sit in a room and not freeze. It is, oh my goodness, it's empowering. I can walk now into those frozen sections of Costco, yeah. you know, before it would be like, okay, take a deep breath. One, two, three, <gasps> run in and get the, the milk and come out. But both of us, kind of our thyroids kind of declined at the same time as our sex hormones. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, so it can be really at any yeah. point of time. I mean, you could, if, if it's Hashimoto's, it can be turned on from a viral mm. infection in your 20s right. or 30s, from over-exercising, under-eating, like in my case, from pregnancy and those hormone shifts. But yes, perimenopause and menopause, Hormones are shifting. And what do we know about autoimmune? We know that testosterone is very protective mm. against autoimmune, which is why women get hit oh, with Hashimoto's yes, more than yes. men, because men have more testosterone than we do. They That's just so, do. It's so true. So many women have thyroid issues and men maybe do, but not as much. But my testosterone, when I tested it, do you want to hear what it was? You get one of her, yes. uh, she gives out medals to those who have really tanked. <laughs> okay. Mine was, right. could not be detected less than zero. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So you're in, you're in, you get like the first. Yeah, but I'm, medal. I'm very optimized now. I'm good. But yeah, no. Good. And, and I've heard different percentages though of women going back to the thyroid home and, and, and um, menopause. Um, is it 75% of thyroid function declines after 50 or is it 40%? I've heard the two numbers and I'm trying to work out what do you say? Like apparently the thyroid percentage of the, of the hormone working. I thought it was in the, in the, it's kind of like in the bottom 25% of like once a woman reaches 50, but you'd know, you see, you just see labs, but you see labs of people that have problems. <laughs> Right. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if we can mm -hmm. say that after 50 because the average age of my patient is 45, right, 47. Yeah. Wow. So I'm even seeing, you know, early on in, in 30s, mm -hmm. early 40s, mid 40s, mm -hmm. I mean, really hitting women hard. I would say if anything, so so there is a term called thyroid pause, thyroid oh, pause. Oh my goodness. So I've never heard that. Yeah. It's really like, and I forget who coined it, so I can't even give proper credit, but it, it's the time in a woman's life where hormones shift and just yeah. like you're saying, thyroid conditions appear. But I also wonder, going back to the previous discussion of misdiagnoses, how many women just accepted the, you're normal, mm. you're normal. You, really, they've been asking yeah. since their 40s, but nobody's been listening to them. So how many women just have dealt yeah. with it until they hit the age of 50 and then finally put their foot down. I was yeah. like, all right. Enough. I think that's true. And then they see yes. that hormone treatment yeah. and then that hormone right. practitioner goes, you know what? Yeah. You got a thyroid problem. It's probably been going on yeah. for like 10 years. I think that's so true. Yeah. Can we talk the reverse T3? Because, um, when I was trying to optimize my thyroid and I didn't have you, but I would take things to doctors too. And I was like, but this says that, you know, and and even right. hormone specialist doctors, some would look at my, um, I, mm -hmm. I was the first time I went for blood work after I was menopausal, you know, all my hormones were tanked, as I said, and my thyroid, I'd always kept a track on it. My TSH was always like in the ones and it jumped up to over three. And I said, I don't think that's great. Right. And he said, no, I think you're okay. You're below four. <laughs> Starting to yell. Yeah. So, you know, with all that, it's just like I started to learn about reverse T3. And, um, and, I, and I, when I heard your podcast, the first time I heard your podcast, you were talking about reverse T3, and I'll never forget it. You said it's like a bouncer. Of a nightclub. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Can you, des yep. can you, des exactly can you describe that for people? Because it just opened my eyes to what reverse T3 is. Absolutely. So every cell in your body has that little receptor site on it for T3. 
Reverse T3 is, is the bouncer outside that cell door telling T3 that's in the bloodstream looking for the connection that it can't come in. It can't connect. Reverse T3 is a built-in survival mechanism. We actually need that built into our bodies because if we are in a car crash, we're injured, we're fighting for our life, we want that reverse T3 to increase, which it will, because our body knows that when you need to survive and you need to heal from a trauma, you don't need to be losing weight, burning Um, fat, mm -hmm. feeling energized, growing your hair, you know. All of those metabolic processes shut down so that all the energy and focus can go to keeping you alive and healing. It's a great mechanism. The problem is, is that we don't want it elevated when we're not lying in a hospital bed fighting for our life. When we're walking around trying to live life and get stuff done, like that's not when we want to be in survival mode. And that's literally how people feel when their reverse D3 is elevated. And it's because that active thyroid hormone can't, get to the cell to do its job. Reverse T3 is just blocking it. So many doctors, practitioners do not test reverse T3. This is what we've come up with. I mean, when we talk to a woman, we're like, well, can you ask them to test your reverse T3? And they're like, my doctor won't do it. Um, Why? Why won't they? Well, they say that it's only valid in a clinical setting, meaning when you're in the ICU, the ER fighting for your life. To which I say, well, no, that would be the no duh time to test it. Like when we test it and you're in the ICU in the ER, we expect it to be up. Mm -hmm. We want it to be up. So with that whole theory of what reverse T3 does, why wouldn't we test it when someone isn't injured like that? It doesn't even make sense, but that's the excuse that they give. And honestly, you know, most conventional docs have been told as well that if there's not a pill or a protocol to follow with a test, then you don't test it. Now, on my end, I go, there is a pill and a protocol to follow. It's called reverse T3 high it means you yes. have to lower that person's T4 medication. You got to add in T3 and you have to look for what's driving up that reverse T3. Is it is it insulin resistance, stress, mm-hmm. estrogen dominance, low low vitamin D, low magnesium, low iodine? What is it that's driving that I just that want to up? do a standing ovation but- right now because you are a doctor saying this and there's not many of you. I mean, we will work with a doctor, Dr. Kay Chandler, who who understands reverse T3, but why are you guys so rare? I know, I know, I don't know. It's just a matter of breaking outside of that that box that you're in. You know, you know it's I even gave a, a, a talk to a group of integrative wellness physicians. And and I said, you know, with with treatment, okay, why why are we not testing reverse T3? Because it does, you know, it gives us so much information. And then why are we in the Synthroid box, the T4 only box, where that literally is the only treatment prescribed? Because if you had somebody come into your office depressed and you gave them an antidepressant that didn't work, you would give them another one and another one and you'd stack on a third and you combine it with an antipsychotic and a sleeping pill. But you won't give more than T4 for thyroid when there's all these other treatments yeah. out there. And the one doc raises his hand goes, that's all we've learned. I'm, s- learned I'm so, so glad you're asking the question though. Would you know if someone came to you with labs and you were not able to um, look at their reverse T3, would you be able to optimize them fully? I mean, probably you could, but wouldn't it be so hard? It's hard. I've actually, I, I, I've had some patients that they'll come in, they'll say, I have all my labs. I go, okay, well, let's let's start with your labs then. We won't order any. We'll just look at what you have. And then we get them and I go, all right, well, let's reschedule because you don't Mm -hmm. have all the labs. You don't have Mm -hmm. reverse T3. We need to get that done. There's nothing I can, you know, you're coming in on, let's say 120 milligrams of armor, or you're coming in on T4 only. If we don't know how you convert, then it doesn't matter how much T3 we add in, in what dose and what amount. That if you have too too much T4 on board, your reverse is going to stay high. We yes, and you don't number. know we how it. well their savings bank can, how, how much they can fill in there, right? You need right. to know that. Right. Yeah. We need to know it. It's vital. It's vital. So, I mean, um, what uh, this is a question I've been wanting to ask you. 
What is the difference, do you think, between, you know, optimized levels where you see them optimum as a physician that might be a TSH that's quite suppressed? You know, for for people listening, TSH Mm -hmm. is actually not a thyroid hormone, right? It's pituitary hormone, but it's the one that's either whispering, yelling or, or megaphone like, you need more thyroid. But, but, but sometimes yep. when, when we're optimized, that can be very low. And then some doctors think, oh, you're hypothyroid. Let's, let's not do that to you anymore. I'm, I'm terrified. Or, or the free T3 goes up to beautiful numbers. Sometimes they're even elevated and, and suddenly the doctor will freak out. What, what is this difference between optimized and, and maybe Graves' disease when it actually is a problem? Right. So we have to look at basic thyroid physiology and that feedback system that all hormones have. When we give you, sometimes even, I've even seen this with women on large amounts of T4, not that that's the proper treatment, but even on high amounts of T4, definitely with treatments that involve T3, we will see that TSH go down and it normally goes below a one, which that's where a lot of people Mm -hmm, feel their best, by the way. But it will it will appear suppressed. Now, since doctors have been told and, and taught in med school, if this, then this. So, yes, if TSH is greater than a 4.5, you give Synthroid. If TSH is less than whatever their cutoff is, they're hyper and you pull their medication or drop it. And that's so yeah. archaic. I mean, that's that. I mean, it's almost borderline yeah. malpractice to go by that that yeah. standard that thought process because when you step back you break out your medical textbooks and you look at thyroid physiology there's a negative feedback loop so when we give you a boatload of hormone or when we give you the active thyroid hormone t3 that pituitary is gonna be satisfied quiet down because it doesn't have to yell at the thyroid anymore. Like, hey, produce more hormone, please. There's enough hormone going around in the system, and there's enough of the active thyroid hormone going around. So, when we're looking at, and this is where that personalized medicine comes in. This is where those four most important words that you can ask a patient: yes. How do you feel? Comes in. How do you feel if if we see a low TSH and we see an elevated free T4, an elevated free T3. And that person says, I feel like yeah. I'm crawling out of my skin. I'm anxious. I'm hyper. Mm-hmm. I can't sleep. Then we say, yeah. you're probably hyper. And we do a test called TSI. That is the antibody test for Graves disease, just to confirm that. But yeah, we'll probably do some change up of the medication or the treatment there. But if you have a suppressed TSH, an optimal free T3, a low or optimal free T4. And that person says, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I feel like a great, nice, steady energy. I'm fine. I'm actually sleeping better. Why would you call them hyper? They're not hyper. They're optimal. (sighs) You have to ask the person how they feel. I think some woman listening to you right now, this is probably the first they've heard of, of, you know, their thyroid's been spoken about like this, but like to me, it's just like a bomb. It's logic bomb, and and I feel like it needs the word needs to get out. Mm-hmm. I feel like, as you say, archaic things are changing, but they're still mostly the same, and this needs to sweep. Right, and and after enough women here, yeah, then that impact can be on the doctors, and maybe it comes from, the, you know, the pressure yes. that women can put on the physicians. Yeah. It, it, I mean, sometimes, and, and then sometimes they just get the door slammed in their face and that's when you have to keep going. You know, I often think back to my story and I go, what if I would have stopped at mm. number four or five, you know, after that many right. doctors, because we elevate right. them, put them on a pedestal, uh, they're human too. After that many doctors tell you that you're normal. I mean, I can see where someone would just start to go, well, you know what? It's got to be me then. It's it's my fault. It's something that I'm doing. And that's where we see these women diet too much, yeah. exercise too much, crash yeah. their adrenals, spend tens of thousands of dollars on yeah. gut healing and adrenal protocols yeah. and this diet plan and this exercise plan and this personal trainer and this nutritionist. And then they're like, nothing's yeah. working. 
I still don't feel any better. I'm just more broke than I was before. You know, it, it's 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 a shame. It's just it's just a shame. You can't, you know, but you can't stop. Yeah. You can never lose hope. That's so good. But speaking stop. of that, I mean, I know that you actually have some fantastic supplements that you've come up with. But we have a, a super, I would say, crunchy natural audience. Um, you know, Serene's the crunchiest of them all. Uh, very natural minded, and some of us, and we've even come out of this. Just the idea of a medication that is prescribed and it comes from a pharmacy, you know, sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been there, we're not there anymore, but I know that some women listening might still be struggling with this. You know, it is considered not natural because it is a prescription, but I, I would love to hear your take on this for, for the crunchies who maybe their whole goal is to get off a medication rather than on and think, well, if I only could eat right or take this or that supplement, as you said, I'll be more natural. I love, love that you answer, ask, ask this question uh, because it's one that I get all the time as well. Here's the thing. When we are replacing thyroid hormone, we're replacing hormones that your body is no longer making. So we really have to categorize the whole broad topic of medication, prescription, something that's written on a pad that you have to go to the pharmacy and get or go to a compounding pharmacy to get. Your, your Band-Aid medications are the ones that the conventional medicine is throwing at you instead of actually getting to the root cause and looking at your thyroid and your hormones. So that's the, the antidepressants, the statins, the blood pressure medications, the sleeping pills. Those are the meds that we might want to step back and go, do I really need this? Or is this just a Band-Aid? But then over in, in this category, we have hormone replacement. We're putting back into your body those hormones that give you life and give you quality of life, longevity, protection against diseases, uh, diseases of aging specifically. So those are, that's hormone replacement. So thyroid hormone goes in there. And the analogy I always give to, to women coming up to me and they'll say like, can I get off right. my thyroid medication? Can I just do this naturally? I said, okay, if you have a, if you have a child that was diagnosed with type one diabetes and the doctor said, you know what? You need to put an insulin pump on your child or give them insulin shots because their pancreas is no longer producing insulin. Would you go, yeah, but I really, I don't, I don't want to do a medication. I'd like to do this naturally. The doctor would go, well, then your child's going yeah. to die eventually because without insulin, you mm -hmm. can't live. So that's, all that is, is replacing yeah. the hormone insulin that your body's no longer being probably being probably making. So why not do that with thyroid hormone? Why not do that with yes. a sex hormone? So yeah. Those are great too. Like let's replace oh, exactly. the hormones. And, and I think so many women, they don't want to be on these, you know, medications, even though they're natural hormones, but they end up medicating with the sleeping pills, mm -hmm. with the, you know, the antidote. Yep antidepressants with these certain things, then they actually become more medically, you know, messed with than if they just took the natural hormone. Yeah, it's so true. Or they'll do 5,000 yes, 5, supplements. 5,000. And think uh -huh. that that's better. And, it'll be, the, and you know, it will be far more expensive, but we don't even really know what those supplements are doing. We know what hormones do and right. they can be tracked. And even though, though I believe in the yeah. power of herbs and herbs yeah, we love are, for our, <laughs> are for our human body, but... More okay. natural to our human body are the hormones it's used to dealing with, right? Yeah. Than some herb or fungi. I mean, that's so wonderful. We can use them, but our body's actually more like, oh, I know this. This is bioidentical to me. This is a hormone I've been using a lot of my life. So I think that's more of a natural thing than mm -hmm. supplements even. 100%. I mean, I'm the founder of a mm -hmm. supplement line and I still don't want people on a boatload of supplements. I want you to take what you need, but not more than, I mean, what's the point of throwing because you heard it on a podcast or saw it on Instagram you don't want to just throw things on your body that you don't know whether your body needs or not. So yes. Well, so well true. Said, but you. you know, one thing, and I hadn't heard it on any of your podcasts. Today, one thing I learned today was thyroid pause. You know, when we go through menopause, our ovaries never, ever start making those hormones again. It's funny that it's called a pause because it's not a pause. It's, it's a really stop. An it's a full stop. <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> yeah. It's a full stop. It is. But, right. you know, with the yeah. thyroid, we can, 
optimize our whole bodies and get sleep and all of that. But now that I'm thinking about thyroid poison, we get to this certain age. Our thyroids are never on their own necessarily going to go back to what they were doing at 18, 20, you know, um, if we didn't have major thyroid right. issues at those times. We need that help. Well, I, I know that I do. And every day, and I'm, I'm not as crunchy as Serene, but I'm pretty crunchy. And every day I wake up and I take my thyroid, I'm like, thank you, God. Oh, I, <laughs> because I'm going to be warm today. I'm going to be energetic yeah. today. I, I'm just going to feel on top of the world. I'm super crunchy, but when I open my little orange from the Walgreens pharmacy prescription armor, I'm like, I am so alle natural. I'm like, I'm convinced of it. It's a hormone. Yeah. It's natural to my body. It's a hormone. We need it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh man, thank you so exactly. much for your time. I, I feel like we've learned so much. Um, everybody, I would love everybody to listen to your podcast, check out your website. You are a wealth of information. I love your podcast on uh, sex hormone replacement oh. therapy too. We could talk a lot about that, but we're kind of, we're kind of oh, keeping yeah. it to thyroid. Um, but today, but uh, so you are at dramyhorneman.com, right? That's where people mm -hmm. find yes, you. Absolutely. And I so hope we can have you back. I love it. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. I love this conversation. It's been fantastic. And, you know, I mean, our, our mission is just to educate and empower women. I mean, they, they have to learn all of this in order to be their own patient advocate and demand no more of the same. That battle cry that I want to spread is you don't have to accept the answers that you're normal when you feel and know that your body isn't right, that there's something going on. And I always say that those, those symptoms that you have yeah. are gifts and they are signals to you to pay attention to your body. And it's your body nudging you saying, you know, Hey, something's going on. Something's going on. You might want to dig deeper into this because your body wasn't meant to be overweight and tired and dragging through life and, and you're going bald and you can't poop every day and all the things like that's not, mm -mm. that's not how we're created. So when your body gives you that little signal, listen to it, because if you don't, then, I mean, Pearl, kind of like what you said, um, or maybe Serena, you said this, who said this, that you're going to end up yeah. on the medications anyways, because then here comes right. the type two diabetes. Here comes, unfortunately, the Parkinson, right. the dementia, the Alzheimer's, yes. the cancer, the cardiovascular disease, all because you didn't listen to your body early on and your body's going, hey, yeah. please help me. So we, we have so to do listen. It. And, and I love that you are a fierce voice, a fierce advocate for women. Um, it's about time. I love that you are unafraid. I mean, you're going up a lot against kind of, um, yeah, a lot of conventional peoples. That, that they feel differently yeah. to you. But I want to thank you for mm -hmm. being a voice for all of us. For I, I've learned so much from you. Um, and we'll continue. I love, I love the guests on your podcast. Oh, yeah. I've promoted some of the books there um, to our own audience. And uh, it just feels so great to have this conversation. Yeah. We need to further it too on the sex well, hormones, you, on the estrogen and progesterone and testosterone yeah. and on heavy lifting. I know. Oh, yeah, we could that. do lots of podcasts. We could have you on again and again. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do it again. We'll totally do it again. Okay, we'll great. Sex Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Doctor.